This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and today we have come with this series, a new series, young and old alike, to take a look at the past, our past, your past, the past that is not seen in the history books. History books are his story, or what we refer to as the mirrors of the past, but we, as colonized people, indigenous people, people of color, look into the mirror and do not see ourselves. Each year, the United States honors the contributions that Latinos have made to our country with an Hispanic Heritage Month that runs from September 15 to October 15. In Honolulu, the 28th annual Hispanic Heritage will be celebrated October 13 on New Uwanu Avenue in Chinatown from 10.30 in the morning until 5, so you can come and play and dance and have a good time. During this annual celebration, the contributions and achievements of Latino Hispanics in the U.S. are honored as well as their culture and tradition. National Hispanic Heritage Month is observed in the United States, Canada, Latin America, and in September 15 was chosen as the start date in order to coincide with Independence Day celebrations of five Latin American countries. Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua, and in addition, Mexico and Chile observe their Independence Day September 16 and September 18, respectively. Commemorating Hispanic Heritage Month gives people of Hawaii an opportunity to feel proud of our neighbors' roots and to share the richness and diversity of the various indigenous cultures. Ah, and so my co-host is Indigenous from Brazil, yes, and she is absolutely the most delightful person you ever want to meet. Beatrice, and everybody knows Beatrice because she has a show on Fridays, so. Well, thank you for having me so, uh, as but, a co-host today. Yes. <laughs> but, Let's talk about uh, I wanted to talk about um, this issue with Beatrice. Because um, I hate to say that I am totally ignorant of the issue of the languaging Hispanic and Latino and what it means and who they are a in American style where they lump everybody together. Mm -hmm. um, and here this month we are in Hawaii all of these different cultures will come together. I think she has 22 different people from 22 different areas that are, quote, Latin America. There are Argentina, Brazil, Bolivia, Chile, Colombia, Costa Rica, Cuba, Dominican Republic, Ecuador, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Mexico, Nicaragua, Panama, Paraguay, Peru, Puerto Rico, Uruguay, and Venezuela. And there's a lot of That's country a lot representations of, yeah, right here in Hawaii. Hawaii yes, you know? right here, yes. <laughs> well, one of the things I find it so particular about the census in Hawaii is that the Latinos, or Latin census purposes, you know, we are classified as Hispanics. We are one of the largest uh, and, and fastest growing uh, group in Hawaii. We are 12.6%, which, which is even more than Native Hawaiians, you know, if you think about the 10%. Mm -hmm. um, but we do have a lot of Latinos yes. here in Hawaii. But now, tell me, what is the difference in Latino and Hispanic? Okay. What's, what's I, I know that's a sensitive 
issue yes. between those two? Uh, what, well, what is? Well, the rules are, are used inexchangeably uh, for several decades now, uh, but they connote uh, certain differences. I think it's worthy talking about it. So, uh, in the 1970s, President Nixon wanted to. Um, incorporate Hispanics in the census as a way to identify um, people from uh, Latin America, so we we'll talk South and Central America. Uh, and also, you know, the UN used to use um, Hispanics as well to uh, define people that come from these regions of the world. And, uh, um, the French in the eight, the like the eighteen hundred, not the seventeen hundreds, came with the term uh, Latinos as a way to um, honor and unify uh, cultures and people that would speak languages that came from Latin roots, so Spanish, French, Portuguese. So part of the you know beef that I think a lot of people have uh, with um, whether to use the term uh, Latino or Hispanic. Um, you know, the preferred term by many people from Central and South America is Latino because it's more inclusive. Um, one of the things that the word Hispanic does not include are the people of, of Brazil because uh, we are not only the la not only we were colonized by Portugal and Portuguese is our native language, we are also the largest country of Central and South America, so you pretty much, you know, eliminate like, a whole lot of people. You yet. don't, you don't recognize them. It's well, not even elimination. You don't even recognize. You don't see well, them. Well, uh, let's. Um, we have a map of. Let's look at Latin America or Central, because, you know, other than you and me, most people don't know where in the world it is. So we do have maps, and let's. So. This one, you see how big Brazil is, yep. and you see how little North America is. <laughs> but that is Latin America. And then up in the corner, you see the Caribbean and, and Central America. And Central America. Yeah. But this. So Brazil South America, is huge. yeah, Brazil is a very large country. It is. Uh, so you know, when you start looking at it, it's like, like oh, wait. You know. <laughs> so um, we have we have Bolivia, Bolivia and Paraguay and Chile, Argentina, Colombia, Ecuador, Venezuela, uh, the French Guiana, right at the very and top. Guiana is up at yes, the top. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, so when you talk about Hispanics, uh, uh, you also have to think about the origin. Don't you have the Dutch somewhere up there? Oh yeah, when uh, Brazil was discovered, uh, there was one point that Brazil was half um, Portuguese and the other half uh, Spanish uh, territory. But we also had a little part uh, in the northeast of Brazil that was Dutch. Uh, Dutch. The Dutch were in Brazil for 30 years and then they phased out. But Portugal was really the main colonizer mm. you know, of Brazil. But, but the thing is, like, if you think about Hispanic, even though the world, you know, and what you're celebrating, and what a lot of the movement decide that we need to make amends to history also. Now, if you think about Hispanic, it is like, well, it comes from Spain. Spain, mm -hmm. Spain conquistadors, you know, they came to, uh, many countries in Central and South America and just pretty much colonized oh, yes. it. And so, you know, I think part of the politically correct aspect of uh, reclaiming uh, identity and honoring uh, ancestry is to recognize that, well, you know, do we really want to be, many countries don't want to be associated with that part of history. Um, even though they have been colonized, you also have to think about the, uh, you know, people of African descent that were brought to these countries as slaves. Where is their representation when you mention Hispanic 
you know, heritage. What about the indigenous people who were yes. not only uh, desecrated, decimated, you know, and their land was taken away, and to this day they're still struggling, and uh, not everybody in Central and South America will speak Spanish. They speak their own indigenous language and have their own culture. And so I think that part of recognizing not only history, but also recognizing, you know, the people who are currently living in these countries that don't want to be associated with, you know, Spanish colonization, yeah. but they also have their own culture, their own language, their own sovereignty, and they're fighting so hard to retain it. I saw you know? a piece on television on Vice, and they were interviewing people, indigenous people that live along the Amazon, and in their own culture and their languages, and it was an incredible lesson So anybody that can speak is still. The watching this lifestyle, these people that have been for thousands of years, mm -hmm. and now the government wants to come in and change things. Yeah. And uh, that's the thing, I think it's very important to talk about it, is, is that it's not a lifestyle, it's a way of living. That's the only way they know. And uh, against all odds, you know, they still have been able to preserve their cultural traditions, their language. And uh, it's so sad to see, um, you know, with more urban development and with more greed uh, from government, uh, you know, with privatization and opening doors for private investors that will come to these lands and uh, pretty much not invite people to leave. Uh, they are really killed uh, and the land is taken away from them. And, uh, you know, so that's how many indigenous cultures have been wiped off from the face of the earth. Or they come with promises of progress, quote unquote <coughs> progress, where it's like, oh, well, you know, we'll bring schools and, uh, and, you know, health access, internet, electricity, your life will be much better. <laughs> this is progress, except that, you know, the way of subsistence and sustainability that indigenous cultures have have worked for them and for the world for many thousands of years, that is stripped away from them because they can't um, no longer use the water resources the way they used to because a lot of the water is changed, the, the dams are created, you know, and so there's a lot of drought in the region, all areas uh, end up being explored uh, for mining. And so, you know, everything gets polluted, uh, and they have a lot of issues with natural disasters of famine, and uh, all of a sudden, a perfect ecosystem and a way of subsisting is destroyed, uh, and then they're in more poverty, and there's no progress for them. Okay, we have, uh, <laughs> we've got to take a break, and when we come back, Let's look at the other parts of Central America and uh, the Caribbean. Yeah. Okay. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. The truth is I'm impressed. I haven't been asked such intelligent questions in a long time. Thanks. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread and kissed them all soundly and put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. Welcome to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, where we motivate, educate, empower, and inspire all women. We are live here every other Thursday at 4 p.m., and we welcome you to join us here at Sister Power. Aloha and thank you. Aloha. I'm Marcia, and this is Beatrice, and we are ex exploring for me, it's a lesson of 
Central and South America, or what is known as Latin America. And we are all on the same continent, but, you know, in the United States, they tend to think they are America. They don't think that there's other parts of America. Do we have a map that shows that part? Do we have any of those? Can you tell? Yeah, there we are. That's Central very America. good. There's Central America. Oh, from that Panama. Mexico, Costa Rica, Panama, yeah. El Salvador, and then, um, you know, like you have Belize, Nicaragua, Honduras, Nicaragua, Nicaragua yeah. Costa Rica, Costa Rica and Mexico. Panama, yeah. The Yucatan Peninsula, they're getting beat up today with the hurricane. I know. Oh, and Cuba, Cuba, Jamaica, Puerto Rico. Yeah. As a side note, you know the largest Chinatown in the world is in Cuba. <laughs> and now you have to explain to our viewers why. Sugar. Yep. The sugar planters. The reason we have so many Chinese in Hawaii and all over the world, wherever there were sugar planters, that was who they wanted for labor. So anyway, let's get back to so, yeah, so anyway, so to wrap up the concept of uh, Hispanic versus Latino, you know, uh, definition, I mean, they are in an exchange of four words, but uh, really in reality, when you think about it, you know, it, perhaps it's more inclusive and more respectful to identify uh, uh, people who come from countries from Central and, and South America as Latinos. I mean, think about... Uh, uh, in Brazil, for example, the largest uh, a community of Japanese individuals, migrants that live outside Japan, are there, and uh, they don't speak <laughs> any Latin root language. But by the virtue of being in Latin America, you know, so there is like the Japanese Brazilian national. And, and in know, Peru, there's a and huge Peru as well. Japanese so, population. Yes. So, you know, we have to think about that. We have to think about also people who come from other countries. You know, we had uh, immigration waves of Germans and Italians. Oh, and after World War II, the Argentina was full of Nazis. Yes, and, uh, and, uh, and Brazil uh, a little bit, but also folks who were fighting fascism and didn't yes. want to be associated with fascism or were persecuted for, you know, fighting the government. And so, you know, there's a lot to be said there. But, you know, running away from that perspective uh, to talk about... You know, like the richness, you know, and, and the beauty of so many different countries, you know, and not only in a continent, but here in America. Oh, yes. You know, because unlike what our president says, that every oh, 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 Latino that who is here, you know, is like a thug and a burden oh, to society, man. it's quite the opposite. Well, you know, in Hawaii, you now this is, this is the limit of my knowledge of Latino in Hawaii, and that is Francesco Martin. Marin, yeah, Marin, and he came here 1700s maybe, uh, and you know where Vineyard Boulevard is? Mm -hmm. Well, he developed a vineyard, which is why it was called Vineyard, and he introduced the coffee plant and so much fruit and vegetables, showing how to grow these things, because up to that point, you know, the the kinds of things that were grown in Hawaii were totally different than the stuff that he imported. And the king loved him, of course. And then mm -hmm. I think something happened. I don't know what it was, but he got in some kind of trouble and was exported to California. So Marin County, as he developed uh, all of the fruit and vegetables there. Mm -hmm. So Marin County is named after him. But he was originally spent years and years developing crops in Hawaii. Mm. So we, but that's the, that's, there is a building named for him yeah. in Chinatown. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's one of many examples, you know, like we have uh, many farms uh, that had 
you know, today they are supported by migrant uh, Latino mm -hmm. workers in Hawaii. Um, if you're going to talk about Latino contribution too, well, sports, you know, oh, when yes. you think about surf, Brazilians are always, you know, hand in hand with the native Hawaiians, you know, but uh, we have many renowned Brazilians who have moved here either seasonally or permanently that um, really, you know, have brought the sport to a new, you know, level as well. Without uh, Hispanics, Latinos, there would be no baseball in America. That is their sport. Every team is just full of people from other, from Latin America, South America, and the islands in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. All of those baseball teams, just full. And what's the world would be like without tacos and burritos <laughs> and salsa <laughs> and, and mariachi dances and, uh, and all of the traditions that we joke about it because, uh, you know, it's like, oh, it's so trivial, but no, it's not. I mean, through food, uh, you learn so much about a culture. It's about coming together. It's about integration. It's about acceptance and tolerance and respect. And uh, that's one easy way, I think, for people to start to get curious about a certain region well, and the people that yes. live in that region. This uh, event on um, October 13th is an opportunity for just that. Mm -hmm. With all of these different ethnic people who are residents of Hawaii, and they bring the music, the dance, the food. Mm -hmm. You can't have a festival in Hawaii without food. No, you got to, you got to have in the food. world. Yeah. yeah, you got to have and, food. And you know that's the one. The similarities. If if you know one of the things that I find it so amazing about cross cultural education and awareness is that as you start to learn and you start to break those barriers. You know, we also recognize how much we have in common as opposed to our differences. You know, like, like Native Hawaiians, you know, people of Central and South America place huge value on family and on work ethics and on peace and celebration, you know, and spirituality. And so when you start to really peel the layers, you know, I think that if, if there is one argument for why you know, America is so special, and by that we also include Hawaii, you know, it's uh, the people that come from everywhere, you know, and, and coexist together yes. and co-create this society together. And so... Um, Especially in Hawaii where everybody intermarries and everybody's part this and part that it's, yes. and and um, rich this is for you uh, <laughs> rich uh, the Filipinos are the only culture that I know of and I love geography where the Spanish did not take away their language. They still have several indigenous languages. Mm -hmm. And that's the only place where everybody else, every place else that the Spanish went and the French, they imparted their language. And, that, and so, Rich, that's for you. Mm -hmm. That's the only place I can think of. Well, there are, there are many uh, villages throughout South Central America that does speak still their native language also and some Spanish. In some mm -hmm. areas, you know, if you really look at it, that's, you know, what is the primary language is their native language, not Spanish. So I'm there's rooting more. for them. <laughs> there's more. Now, if you think about Honduras, in El Salvador, you know, in Peru, in um, Chile, I believe, and Brazil, you know, now, you know we have 
speak Guarani language, which unfortunately I wasn't able to learn. But you know, there are there are you know languages that are still you know they haven't vanished, they haven't disappeared. Now your mother is indigenous. My mother was. Uh, she passed away ten years ago, and uh, she grew up in the native um, reservation of Brazil until the age of twelve. Mm -hmm. uh, with my grandparents and the rest of the family and overnight the area was misappropriated, it was taken by farmers who decided to come and uh, redevelop the area. So with the help of the military government, the militia, that pretty much uh, held everybody at gunpoint and said that either you live or you die. And uh, you know, I'll never forget, uh, you know, my mother's recollection of that, you know, late afternoon, f what that meant for for her and her family. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, but so she spoke uh, to Piguarani uh, and then Portuguese also, um, but she was forbidden from teaching me and my sister to be Guarani because uh, it wasn't civilized language. Oh my. But even though I did not learn the language, my heart is half, you know, the heart of an indigenous Amazonian woman. And, uh, you know, someday I'm going to learn it. <laughs> and I know the beautiful thing about this though, I've always wanted to go to the Amazon and to learn more about my indigenous roots. What I have not realized until I moved to Hawaii is how much Polynesian uh, um, culture, the indigenous culture, has to do with indigenous culture, not only in Brazil, but in many countries, both Central and South America, because of the seafarers yes. of Polynesia who got to these lands, to these areas. And so, I think if there is a spiritual, you know, force in the universe, I had to come to Hawaii, and I have not made that connection with the native Hawaiians. It was actually the families of Micronesia, the first generation families, who are still so, you know, walking with their traditional roots, still have that raw indigenous, you know, essence. That made me go back, you know, to my childhood and remember remind me of my grandparents and my own mother, you know, in essence, too. And then I got to learn more about Native Hawaiian culture, and I said, now it's full circle. So here we are, you know, celebrating um, Hispanic Heritage Month, and we're talking about indigenous roots well, the title, all the way, you know. Yeah, and the title of Pacific. the event is One Endless Voice, to enhance our traditions. And with that, we're gonna I have to say, <laughs> yes! <laughs> the girls of Brazil, oh, no. Samba. Right. <laughs> and <laughs> anyway, we have to close, but we would love to see all of you on Saturday on New Uanu Avenue in Chinatown from 10.30 to 5 p.m. And come salsa and eat and yes. dance and, and learn and, and enjoy and enjoy and have fun yes thank you so much and thank you beatrice this is always a pleasure to be the girls from brazil thank you <laughs> i love it we need to do this more often yes. <laughs> aloha and we'll see you next time <laughs>